Let me come in and have dinner in your house. Let me, I just came all the way across. Let me just rest in your house a little bit. Let me in. So he let him in. And he continued on and continued on and continued on until Ka'ab declared that he has no treaty with Muhammad. And he was convinced that he can uh, defeat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and bring the glory of Bani Nadir and Bani Qaynqa and all of these that were expelled by aiding those uh, armies of Quraysh and Ghatafan and by uh, not honoring the treaty between him and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Bani Quraiza decided to respond to Huyay and Abu Sufyan and betray the treaty with the Muslims. And now comes the, the really turn in this battle. Go over this with the scenario that they planned, that Huyay planned and that the Mushrik planned. And this is what they wanted, is the, 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 what they wanted to fulfill by this treason. Medina is to be attacked from both sides at the same time. That there would be an army that would leave the fortresses of Bani Quraiza and attack Medina from behind. Muslims will have to abandon some of their positions at the mountain of Salah and come south to protect their families. Now I said every Muslim came out of this battle. There was nobody left in Medina but who? But women and children. So Muslims will have to abandon some of these positions and come down. What will happen and then become easier to use these places in the trench that are weak and to cross. And when you do that, then you can defeat the people that are on the Mount of Salah. Because many of them will run to protect their wives, their sisters, their daughters and their children. And an army would also attack Medina from the south. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Al-Ahzab. And we go to, to verse 10. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. إِذْ جَاءُوكُمْ مِنْ فَوْقِكُمْ وَمِنْ أَسْفَلَ مِنْكُمْ وَإِذْ زَاغَةِ الْأَبْصَارِ وَبَلَغَةِ الْقُلُوبُ الْحَنَاجِرِ وَتَظُنُّونَ بِاللَّهِ الظُّنُونَ هُنَالِكَ ابْتُلِيَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَزُلْزِلُوا زِلْزَالًا شَدِيدًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, When they come upon you from above you, and from below you, and when the eyes grew wild, and the hearts reached the throats, with fear that is, and you were harboring doubts about Allah, said, that's it, that's the end. We can't do it. They're, 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 we're, we're trapped, we're surrounded. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, there the believers were tried, were tested, and shaken with a mighty shaking. They were shaken very, very badly and very hardly. And the plot would continue that after crushing the Muslims on Salah, then the Muslims will be trapped in Medina, they will be attacked and crushed between the two armies, and then they will be annihilated and then forever destroyed. The treason of Bani Quraiza was very, very important. And that's the scenario that was plotted. Now, why do we have to understand this? Because the punishment has to meet and be equal to the sin. And the sin of Bani Quraiza, the treason of them, was basically the result of that was to annihilate and kill Muslims, all of them, and destroy them forever. And that what they were planning to do. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had a different scenario. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had a different plan. And we just go back to the slide that just we left when the treason was announced. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam heard of this, but he wanted to make sure. And what he did, he sent two people there. And these two people were Sa'd ibn Mu'ad and Sa'd ibn Ubadah, the two of Ansar. He said, you go and talk to Ka'b ibn Asad. And you, you give me the news. You give me the truth about this. Are they still on their promise to us? Or have they decided to betray the treaty? So they go in there. And Rasulullah told them another thing. He said, when you come back, don't tell me what you know 
in front of everybody if you know that that was the treason. If you know that they are on, on, on the treaty and they will fulfill the promises, then say that, announce that. So the army, the hearts of the army can settle. And they know that, that Bani Quraiza will not betray them. But if you see something else going on, don't announce it. Because that will just uh, spread panic in the army. Just give me a, uh, some kind of a hint so I would know that that's what it is. So they came to Kaab and once they got close to the fortresses, they hear people up from the court just cussing them out, cursing them. The Muslims, you, you, you killed our brothers, you send them out, you, you whatever. And they said, let's not judge this by what we are hearing. Let's go meet with them. So they go in and they meet with Ka'b ibn Asad. And he said, Man Rasulullah? Who is Muhammad? Who is Rasulullah? لا عهد بيننا وبينه. We don't recognize that he is Rasulullah and we don't recognize that he ha- we have any treaties with him. So they left him. And they came with the news to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And from their look, some sahaba knew I mean, you cannot, you may not say words, but sometimes you cannot hide the, the way you look, the way you, dis, you, you get disappointed with such a treason. And when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked them what, the, what is going on, they said, Adalun wa qarra. Now, Adal wa qarra, this is just a hint that they gave Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Those of you who were here last session, remember, those who took the Sahaba to the, to the well of al and slaughtered them there after they gave the promises to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that they will protect them, were the two tribes of Adal and Waqara. So these are the people of the treason. So they told Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Adal and Waqara, that these are, that, that this is, is the treason. But however, since even while they tried to keep that secret, the news got out, and had what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said happened, that the hearts of Muslims were very shaken very shaken with fear. And then, some of the munafiqeen were were exposed again. Not only they were exposed in Ahud, they were also exposed again at the time of Al-Khandaq. And they said, كَانَ مُحَمَّدٌ يَعِدُنَا أَنْ نَأْكُلَ كُنُوزَ كِسْرَى وَقَيْسَرَ Yesterday, Muhammad was promising us the treasures of Kisra, of Caesar, and and uh, of Kisra, the Persian uh, king, and Qaisar, Caesar. And today, أَيَحَدُنَا الْيَوْمَ لَا يَأْمَنُ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ أَنْ يَخْرُجَ لِلْغَائِطِ And today, we are not safe to go use the outhouse, to go use the bathroom. And then Bani Salama almost decided to leave and go back to Medina without the orders of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descended in that in verse 12, وَإِذْ يَقُولُ الْمُنَافِقُونَ وَالَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٌ مَّا وَعَدَنَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ إِلَّا غُرُورًا وَإِذْ قَالَ طَائِفَةٌ مِّنْهُمْ يَا أَهْلَ يَثْرِبَ لَا مُقَامَ لَكُمْ فَارْجِعُوا وَيَسْتَأْذِنُ فَرِيقٌ مِّنْهُمُ النَّبِيَّ يَقُولُونَ إِنَّ بُيُوتُنَا بُيُوتَنَا عَوْرَةٌ وَمَا هِيَ بِعَوْرَةٍ إِنْ يُرِيدُونَ إِلَّا فِرَارًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about these munafiqeen in verse 12 and when the hypocrites and those in whose hearts is a disease of doubt said, Allah and His Messenger promised us nothing but delusion. He was telling us about the treasures and Rome and Persia. And here we are. We're about to be slaughtered. And when a party of them said, <coughs> all people of Yathrib, that is Al-Medina, there is no stand possible for you against the enemy attack. Therefore go back. And a band of them asked for permission of the Prophet, that is Banu Salama. They say, and truly our homes lie open to the enemy. And they lay not open. They but wish to flee. They said that our houses are the closest. But what does it matter? What difference does it make? You either stand together or you get defeated together. If the army just, you know, disintegrated and everybody wanted to go out and, and protect his house, then they were all loose. They have to stay under the command of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had slept and then he heard the Jibreel giving him the glad tiding. And he woke up and he said, Allahu Akbar, abshiru ya ma'ashara al-muslimina bi fadhillahi wa nasrih. Allahu Akbar, 
have the good news that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised me that we will be victorious and he will come to our aid. I mean, this was a very bad situation as we saw from that scenario. And what happened, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he sent him a man from Ghatafan. Now Ghatafan is one of the tribes that is in the coalition, actually one of the largest tribes in the coalition. And that man was Na'im ibn Mas'ud al-Ashja'i. He was, his name was Na'im ibn Mas'ud and he's from the people of Ashja'. And if you, those of you who remember the, uh, the battle that uh, happened in Najd and Zayd ibn Haritha when he took the tribe, Na'im ibn Mas'ud was the one that got the news and gave it to the Mushriks that, you know, that uh, he actually gave the news to the Muslims while he was drunk that uh, the, the caravan will take a different route, just to, to remind you of that. So anyway, Na'im, he, he had some connection with Muslims and his, the Iman, the faith, came